So how does one distinguish between chronic cholestasis and hepatitis? And this distinction is a very fundamental part of evaluating a liver biopsy. The two diseases, hepatitis and cholestasis, are approached very differently by our clinical colleagues. They're very, very different. Apples and oranges, ladies and gentlemen, apples and oranges. The low bar appearance of chronic cholestasis-related cirrhosis is very characteristic. It essentially looks like a jigsaw puzzle, and here is that jigsaw puzzle-like appearance, nodules of regenerative liver shaped like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle surrounded by all of this fibrosis. Feature number two, note the edema adjacent to these regenerative nodules. Now, this edema is created by the retention of the bile salts. Unfortunately, the liver simply can't get rid of these bile salts and they accumulate in the periceptal hepatocytes. So feature number two is this edema at look around the hepatic nodules, a halo-like appearance around the nodules. Feature number three and four. Feature number three, the hepatocytes are enlarged pale to clear cytoplasm. This is the so-called feathery degeneration, again precipitated or caused by the accumulation of bile salts, again typically seen at the interface between the hepatic nodules and fibrosis. Feature number four are foam cells at the interface. These are foamy histiocytes. The technical term often used is pseudoxanthomatous change. So feature number five, ballooning change and Mallory hyaline production. Again, at the interface between the nodule and the septa, notice these enlarged clear cells, ballooning degeneration, and this thick ropey eosinophilic material, which is the Mallory hyaline. So the presence of Mallory hyaline does not always indicate steatohepatitis or alcoholic steatohepatitis. Feature number six, crazy bile duct proliferation. Now, I'll confess that you see bile duct proliferation in virtually every disease, including hepatitis, but the level of bile duct proliferation reaches its pinnacle, its craziest, with chronic cholestasis. Typically, you'll also see expanded portal tracts, edema, a sprinkling of lymphocytes, and neutrophils. And here is more of that crazy bile duct proliferation. There's an insane number of bile ductules here, but also notice the number of neutrophils. Now, in most cases, the neutrophils that are associated with bile ductular proliferation and chronic, chronic cholecystitis aren't as prominent. Now, remember, these inflammatory cells could penetrate the limiting plate, be associated with lymphocytes, but this is not to be mis mistaken for the interface hepatitis associated with other forms of chronic hepatitis. Biliary type interface activity, which is what this is, is not associated with necrotic hepatocytes.